I think why uh, uh, MMA in US is so good and Russia is and Brazil is because they have that grappling and striking. So India has grappling and striking. We have strong wrestling, strong boxing. So when uh, when these boxers and wrestlers will be like, let's go, let's let's be an MMA fighter, let's be a UFC fighter, you'll see that uh, we'll be unstoppable. We, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna be like US or, or Russia and Brazil. We'll will have so many champions, and I don't think that day is very far away. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Smack Talk with Sandu. I'll tell you something, I have been looking forward to speaking to my guest for, for quite some time. Right now, as we speak, he is currently the only Indian fighter on the UFC roster. He made his debut earlier this year. He's got a massive fight coming up in Abu Dhabi at UFC 294. He is the king of lions he is Anshul Jubilee. Anshul, it's a pleasure to finally speak to you. How are you right now? Yeah, I'm very, very good. Very excited to talk to you. You know, I, like I'm also looking forward to, uh, for a very long time, I've been like, I'm going to be in this show one day, you know. Sandhu will interview me and everything. So I'm very, very happy actually. Yeah, and this has been, like I said, a long time coming. It's not often that I'm able to actually interview uh, a fighter on the UFC <laughs> roster that is either of Indian descent or is actually uh, home and grown from India. But here's where I'd like to start with you, Anshul. H how did you meet mixed martial arts? How did you find the sport, both as a fan, but then also as something that you aspired to become, which is a professional fighter? I think uh, it's more this sport found me. I I was just you know looking forward to I was looking to uh, you know uh, do some sport which helps me in my you know uh, CDS, which is like a army officer exam. So I wanted to be in the army always. So I just wanted to do this sport as like I'll get some certificates, some medals, and I can show in the interview that I uh, see I have been doing this combat sport. So it it would help me in my you know uh, career in uh, army but uh, i found uh, i fell in love with this sport and here we are amazing <laughs> and and correct me if i'm wrong even your aspiration to to join the army was that something that you got from your father because I, I believe your father was uh, working for the border for security and and because of that you were moving around in india quite a lot too right yeah, 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 my my father was in uh, border BSL, border security force. It's a paramilitary force in India, uh, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and yes, like a defense kid, I have been all around in India. I posted different states in India. So yeah, that, that so not not from my father because I think my father uh, was not. Uh, didn't want me to get into the army and everything you know he's like oh it's, it's I, he didn't like it so <laughs> so that's one thing what i uh, learned from my father is don't do something which you don't like like <laughs> so uh, but but everybody else other than my father everybody else in the world like you're very athletic you're good in sports good in studies so you should you should go for you should be an army officer and you know, you have that leadership quality and everything. So everybody was telling me this and I was like, okay, I, I was convinced that this, I think I'll, I'll be perfectly, uh, I think I'm made for uh, defense. But when I found this sport, I was like, no, 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 no. This is, this is my calling is. So, uh, yes, I, I, you know, I've, I have the odd the most respect for the defense and army officers and you know the uh the soldiers because i think it's the hard i truly believe because my father was in was in the defense so i know it's the hardest job in the world whatever you say is the hardest job in the world second is i think labor work is the second hardest job uh, sport is very very easy in front of these guys like we, we think that it's very hard i know sport is mms a combat sport is hard but in 
in front of uh, this kind of job, it's nothing. Yeah, and um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, you're trying to join the army, but you also get a degree in mathematics and you worked as a school teacher. Is that correct? Yeah, I was a maths teacher, uh, maths teacher. I was not, not a, okay. So I was a maths tutor. I used to teach maths to the kids, you know. Uh, I was not very good in that, I, I believe. But yeah, that's the, because I was, I like maths. So yeah, I used to teach maths. That's crazy. So you're, you're trying to join the army. You're, you know, teaching yeah. mathematics. <coughs> you have found this passion for, for mixed martial arts. But at what point do you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to stop everything and I'm going to give this a go. I'm going to try and become a professional fighter. Uh, it's, it's a story. Like I was going somewhere. I was in a bus. I was traveling somewhere. So there, there's one guy who was just sitting uh, beside me and I was, uh, he was an, he, he, he was an army officer. So I was telling him, I also want to, you know, be in the army and everything. So he, he asked me, what's your schedule like? Like you're preparing for, for the CDS combined defense force. So what's your schedule? So I was telling him, uh, this is my schedule. I wake up, I go to my boxing class, then I prepare for my uh, exam. And then I in evening, we, me and my friend, we bought some mats and we see Firaz Zahabi, GSP videos and try to do some, you know, um, jiu-jitsu, try to learn jiu-jitsu by ourselves uh, through uh, YouTube. And then he he heard all my, my schedule and he was like, do you really want to do the army or because it's it's like you're you're trying to fit your preparation in just in between your MMA practices. So I, because I think you're very passionate about MMA and that I think he was the angel of my life. And then I, then I decided that I, I should give this sport a chance. I should do it seriously because before that I'm very, it's a regret of mine that before, before that, uh, before I took this sport uh, seriously, I used to tell uh, people this: there's no career in this sport. It's a if you're doing it for fitness and everything, it's good. But it's India, like how how we and we are from a middle class and humble background, and we we just want to you know support our family and do something which is like good enough to feed ourselves and everything. You, do you want to? I was like, do you want to? You know. <laughs> die die without food so but but then uh, then finally when i realized it yes this is my calling i'm very very passionate about it um uh, i used to think about mma and you know this sport all the time then i was like i should give this sport a chance i'll give this sport one year i have like i uh, by by teaching and everything i i, I collected some money which is like enough for one year. So then I, I, uh, then for one year, I was like, I'll give this sport a chance. And in on that one year, nothing happened. <laughs> but in just one year, and I was like, I'll stay two more months. And then after one year and two months, I just got this chance in a pro MFN Matrix fight night. And uh, you know, I become a professional fighter and. Uh, I was facing all the adversities from then on also, but I was like, I've never stopped from then. Yeah, I actually just spoke to uh, yeah, Jackie Shroff, uh, sorry, uh, not Jackie Shroff, Krishna Shroff, uh, Jackie yeah. Shroff's daughter, uh, who is obviously one of the owners of uh, yeah. Matrix Fight Night. And she had nothing but the best things to say about you. And I feel like Matrix Fight Night is almost becoming, like in the UK and Ireland, there's cage warriors. They kind of yes. cultivate the local talent in that region and kind of help them get in, you know, pro fights and get them ready for the big show. And a lot of those fighters do end up going to the UFC. What was your experience like getting all those uh, pro fights with the uh, MFN? So I I truly believe I am I'm a MFN FN, MFN pro, pro, uh, what do you call that? Product? I truly believe that yeah I'm a MFN product because my first five fights was in the MFN and after that I got the chance in Road to UFC. So it's just it's just. I'm so sorry. So it's just 
MFN, then road to UFC. So I, I came from MFN, and it's it's the best promotion. I'm telling you, you'll not believe it, but if you come to that show, you you'll realize it's better than Cage Warrior and any other promotion. Yeah, UFC is UFC, but still, like uh, for an Indian promotion, which is like a Indian Indian promotion, it's very very good, and we are like uh, very very proud of MFN. I have like. I have nothing but best thing to say. The Aisha Shroff and Krishna Shroff, how they're handling all the, you know, fighters and everything. It's, it's, you should appreciate this. And um, I'm, I'm like, I'll always, I'll always be an MFN fighter. When you get that phone call that, hey, there's an opportunity with this tournament, the road to the UFC yeah. for you to win a contract and get into the UFC. That must have been a very exciting time for you. And how do you kind of switch from, okay, I've had these professional fights at MFN, but now is yeah. my chance and now is my opportunity to get into the UFC and get onto the global stage? Um, when, when my coach, uh, Coach Siddharth, when he, he actually got the first call from, you know, Road to UFC, but that time they were saying, it's not a road to UFC. That's why they were saying we were like um, there's a there's a tournament which is UFC is like UFC is doing, but it's I thought we thought it's a you know UFC fight pass thing. So okay, we were like okay, it's it's an opportunity, and uh, I was preparing for then then they then they announced it. It's a road to UFC. Whoever will win this tournament get a UFC contract, and that day I was like okay. I'll be a champion now. So yes, it it was it, it was a tough tournament. Everybody was doubting me that you know where China and Korea and Japan, uh, Japanese fighters, all these fighters from these countries were fighting. Where MMA is very big, like in China, MMA big Korea, and you know there's a lots of fighter in UFC from these countries, and they were like, no, you you have no chance. You're not gonna win this against these fighters and everything. I was like, no, 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 you don't know me. You don't know me. I'm <laughs> I'm a different different animal. So I won this tournament. I got this contract, and my now my uh, focus on this fight. I'm gonna win this fight. And I'm getting to get into the top ten very, very soon. So when people are doubting you that you know you, you're not going to be able to compete with you know these fighters from these other countries, is is that kind of fuel to your fire? Is that the motivation that you kind of like you know latched onto? Yes, that's that's definitely a motivation. I I truly believe you have you have uh, two choices: either these things, these negativity or these doubts. You can uh, you can burn yourself with. Like you, you always think, oh, am I not good enough? Or you can say, okay, you're saying this. I'm going to prove you that you are wrong and I'll work hard. I'll do everything in my control and the result will speak for, for itself. So I, th that's my mentality. I, I truly believe that people are still saying that uh, Indian fighter, um, uh, no chance. We'll see when he get into top 10 or top 15 and everything. But I'll be like, okay, okay, thank you so much. Uh, I'll, I'll show you that uh, nothing is Im impossible. Yes, I'm, I'm Indian. Um, I train in India. I learn in India. Now I'm like, now I'm traveling all around the world, learning everything. And very soon, very soon, I'll be there and nothing will stop me. There's only one thing in my control, which is I'll work hard. Uh, if the you know hardship will come, I'll overcome that. I, I'm 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 still facing all the adversities and everything, but I'm like no, I'll you know I have this chance. I, I I'm truly just I'm saying this. I have this chance to represent India, where all the eyes are there. You know, the the people are believing that. He's gonna, he's gonna be a star, and he's gonna represent us. He's gonna uh, take Indian MMA to some other heights. And I have this opportunity. How can I miss this opportunity? I'll do everything in my control. I'll work very, very hard. I will not quit. I will not give up. And yes, I'll, I'll achieve everything which I'm thinking. I love it. This is getting me fired up. I love hearing all this kind of stuff. Um, so you, so you, you won the con the contract. And then you finally made your your UFC debut earlier this year. Could you just um, maybe describe the emotions that you were kind of feeling? Not just, you know, the butterflies that maybe you had during fight week, but actually getting into the cage. But more importantly, 
winning the fight, you're still undefeated, but winning that fight in the UFC properly, what did that mean to you? And how did you, can you describe how that felt? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I can describe that feeling, but uh, I can say this. I felt like I'm the chosen one. I'm, I'm, God loves me and, you know, I'm, I'm uh, special for like, God made me very special. And uh, so that's, that's what I think I was like, okay, it's, uh, God is with me and, you know, I, I'll, I'll not miss this opportunity. I'll work very hard. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud and I'm very uh, humbled by by all these, you know, appreciation I'm getting from my country and from from all the people who were supporting me, who loves me. I I can I can uh, I've I've done nothing in my life which I can say I, I, I'm inspiring people or I'm you know I'm motivating people. All I can say is I'll uh, when I get rich. <laughs> when I get rich, then I can say that I'm I'm, I'm motivating people and uh, I'll be an inspiration. But I have this chance that I can be a you know inspiration, and that's that that's motivates me. This journey that you've been on, especially when you made your UFC debut and you and you won in that fight, like can you just share how that was received in India? Did you start to feel the love from Indian people and Indian MMA fans? Did your social media blow up? Yes, yes. Obviously, I had like uh, two thousand followers, and suddenly I got four hundred thousand. Um, I think Indians are very patriotic. We are. We can, you know, if you say, "Can you die for your country?" I live. Oh, <laughs> where, where? <laughs> so, so we are very patriotic people. Um, when, whenever somebody is representing India, we support them like fully all heartedly uh, anyone if um, if somebody is getting a, a medal in uh, olympics and we are not like you know these western countries it's okay we'll celebrate you and we'll do everything because you are giving us hope india as a country which is like not we we, we are like not first world we are still you know growing so if you represent our country and if you if you if you're giving us hope we'll celebrate you so that's that's what my experience is. They, they, my people, people from India, from my state, my, you know, they they're celebrating this, and and I I I believe it's it's the right thing because for a person who comes from India, and uh, maybe there's so many fighters in the UFC, but the the journey, how long I traveled, how long I walked, should be ma- should matters like. Like I've I've told I've said this before. So a fight a fighter who born in uh, US or you know UK anywhere who was like the world class gyms are just just he, just like a one kilometer for, away from from his home. He become a UFC fighter is I'm not saying it's easy, but it's he the. The distance he covered in his life is much less than what I covered. So I I've done I've I haven't done just uh, my training right or you know my I've done everything right. I I I just didn't uh, worked hard. I worked smart and everything. I worked on my social social media, my skills, my cardio, and you know uh, my contacts and everything. The coaches I chose and everything. So. It's it's not it's just not I worked hard and I become a UFC fighter. I've done I took so many UFC, so many fighters got this opportunity for for road to UFC. Everybody was like, we ha- we have no chance. We are good here. I was the uh, I was the main I was the face of MFN. They were paying me good, and still I I, I was like, no, I I'll, I'll take this risk. MFN is good. I love the company, but I'm, I, I want to go to UFC. So I took this risk. I, you know, I didn't take the contract there. I took this risk. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm the only fighter right now in the UFC. But not mistaken, there there will be lots of coming, and I I'm I mark my work in inside this one or two years. You'll see like three four fighters in the UFC. I love India. it. 
Do, do you sense there's a big shift and a big change in the sport in India? Obviously, you have a really great promotion now in MFN, but are you seeing more gyms open up and mm -hmm. more uh, young athletes, you know, trying to get into the sport? Uh, and do you think you could be a catalyst for further change moving forward as well? Yes, definitely. Uh, MFN 13 is also happening in 28th of October. Please watch this show. You'll see the international level Indian fighters are there who are like almost ready for the UFC. If not now, then then in one or two years, you'll see ten years old, twelve years old are coming coming to the gyms and academies in India and there. They're like they have the hope that we'll be will be a UFC fighter one day. So there's a huge shift in India. They're like now boxers because boxing and wrestling are very big in India, right? It's very, very good. It's the level are very high. Now they are also like, what's this sport? MMA mixed martial art. Let's let's try this. So that's I think my my one of my dream is like when wrestlers and boxers are like okay, let's do this sport. And then when these two sports will come, why? I think why uh, uh, MMA in US is so good and Russia is and Brazil is because they have that grappling and striking. So India has grappling and striking. We have strong wrestling, strong boxing. So when, uh, when these boxers and wrestlers will be like, let's go... Let's let's be an MMA fighter. Let's be a UFC fighter. You see that uh, we'll be unstoppable. We, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna be like US or, or Russia and Brazil. We'll we'll have so many champions, and I don't think that day is very far away. Now you've trained in India, obviously. You've also, I believe, trained at Bali MMA. Bali is just beautiful i've been there it's a fantastic uh, part of the world um okay. is that where you foresee your training to continue or, or have you thought about perhaps um visiting you know gyms in europe or or the us to further your training and maybe train with some other um, athletes or other fighters and, and other coaches so i'm training in uh, soma fight club in bali I've done my three this uh, this my this was my third training camp in bali I I <laughs> Balin Soma Fight Club under coach Mike. Uh, I love Soma Fight. It's it's now it's my home gym. Like Cross Train, Cross Train is the gym I came from in India, uh, and now Soma is like I feel like it's my home gym. I'm gonna I'm gonna be there. I I don't think there's anything which is not there for in Soma Fight Club in Bali. Like like Tiger Muay Tiger Muay and banked out. People are like coming from US to train there, so uh, it's not like we have any. We have world class boxing coach, uh, striking coach, and you know kickboxing coach and wrestling, MMA, uh, jiu jitsu. Everything is there, and people li people like the training there. You re recover fast, you know the sea, the sun, and everything. It's very very good. Uh, I think I'm gonna do my uh, do my training. Yes, I, I'm gonna explore. I'm gonna go. Uh, here and there for you know for new experiences to learn and everything but uh, this would be my home gym i think i i think I'm, I'm very it's i'm very like i grow very fast there now I'm coaches are you know they care about me i think you you grow uh, in my career i in just 5 6 years i grew this much because i found those coaches who care about me like who who wants me to succeed and that's why I'm. The, the, I think that's the key thing. So in Soma Fight Club and my coach, Coach Siddharth in Crossman, they want me to succeed. They they have this, you know, love for me. So yes, that that's my home gym, and you know, I'm I'm gonna be there for always, like. Until I die. <laughs> I love it. No, you're loyal to your gym. I love it. You. Uh, I didn't know that you were also training at Tiger Muay Thai. Absolutely world class. Some of the best fighters in the UFC also train out of Tiger Muay Thai as well. Um, so this is exciting. You know, you won the UFC contract. You won your UFC debut. You know, your social media is blowing oh. up. This is a full time uh, profession for you now. You've got your home base. But then, in addition to all of that, 
you signed with Paradigm Sports Management, which is one of the leading agencies when it comes to representing uh, not just MMA fighters, but athletes in general. But in the world of MMA, you know, they represent the likes of Michael Bisping, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, Michael Venom Page, but of course also Conor McGregor. When did that opportunity present itself? Did they approach you? Did you approach them? And when did you sign with Paradigm? Oh, actually, uh, they approached me. They it was they didn't approach me that uh, uh, we, we we want to sign you. It's like we we just want want to talk to you. Uh, they uh, like my, my everything is with my coach Siddharth. So he he knew. I was like I was like okay okay after the fight in this. But they're like no, it's paradigm. What you know, Conor McGregor. If you say Conor McGregor, I'll I'll listen. <laughs> so they're like uh, Conor McGregor is signed with them. So we had a call with Leo, my manager, and I was like, I was convinced he's so good. And I I think I'm I'm very, very lucky. Uh, I think God is with me. And, you know, I, I've been very lucky. I, Leo convinced, and convinced us and I was like, we signed right away. Otherwise, we were thinking after the fight because we had the contract anyway. So last UFC, UFC final. So I thought... We, I'll uh, win this fight and then I'll sign, you know. I, but but uh, but I signed before that, and thank God I can't live without Leo now, my manager. <laughs> I can't live without him because UFC people think it's you know you just sign a contract. With UFC, you have to sign so many things. There's Usada involved and everything. It's it's very hectic. So you know, Leo take care of everything. He he makes my life easy, and I'm. I'm I'm very blessed that these guys are with me. I'm blessed that uh, Paradigm. I'm signed with Paradigm. So yeah, life is good. Have you had a chance to speak to Conor McGregor? No, not 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 till now. But yeah, hopefully one day. Is he someone that inspires you, um, or like you know, even when you were a fan watching the UFC, are there fighters that you looked up to and say that's somebody I would like to emulate if I made it to the UFC one day? So every fighter who is who is in the top at that time? I who inspires me like right now, uh, John Jones and obviously Volkanovski, Slam. These guys inspires me. When Conor McGregor was in his prime, he obviously he was inspiring everybody in the world. Like who, who was not into the MMA also UFC. So he inspired me, Khabib, and every all these fighters inspired me. If you're, on, I'm very biased. Like if you're, if you're on, on the top, you inspire me. If you, if you're not. If if you're losing, then uh, so. But yeah, yes, yes. He inspired me. Obviously, inspired me. Uh, when I start, when I started um, watching UFC, Anderson Silva was the was the guy. He was knocking everybody out and, and everything. Then Conor McGregor came. GSP was the John Jones is like always. Uh, he's a he's like a beast. And yeah, Volkanovski now. So yeah, these guys inspires me. If you see, I. I want to be a champion. I want to have the, that belt, gold belt. Uh, see, whoever has the belt or had the belt, that gold belt, because I want to, I want to achieve that goal. I, I want to have that gold belt on my vest. So, if you have that belt, or if in past you have had that belt, you you're an inspiration for me. You're a motivation for me because it's not easy to be a world champion. Even for one day, if you are a world champion, you're a world champion. You're the best in the world in that weight category. So Conor, Conor McGregor, Khabib, um, right now, Slam and Volkanovski, John Jones, GSP, all these guys, all these legends, they inspired me. And, you know, I, I, I want to meet the, all these guys one day. That'll be pretty cool, right? Like you're the first Indian fighter to become a champ. Is that the goal? Like you, do you want to be the first Indian UFC champion? That's why I'm here. I'm, I'm telling you, like I, I want to be a champion so bad. And it's in my mind every day. It's like, how can I become a champion? Okay. My cardio should be best in the world. My strength should be best in best in the world. If my striking grappling sh- will become the best in the world, I'll become a champion. What should I do for that? I, I work, uh, I smartly work or in all these area. And in just two, three years, I'll, I'll be there. So I want to be the first Indian. Imagine the legacy. Imagine the legacy. People will never forget my name. Maybe not in 100 years at least. And you know, first 
UFC champion, world champion from India in the weight category, which is like the toughest weight kit category in the in you know in UFC. So that's my goal, and I'm gonna achieve that. I love it. Well, the next step on this journey goes down at UFC 294. Your next opponent is Mike Breeden, and he's got, I think, double the number of professional fights that you have, so it's probably a good step up in competition. What's the training camp been like preparing for Mike, and, and stylistically, how do you feel like you match up with him? I think stylistically, is I, uh, we're going to have war. Uh, he's, a, he's a good, good complete fighter. He's good grappling, good, uh, good striking. But I don't think he's my level. I'm I'm better than him in all areas, and I'm gonna finish this fight. He's, I I'm a fan of this guy. I'm I, because I was watching this his fight uh, um, contender series, and he he was losing the two rounds and the third round. He he came like very very hard, and he's he's very good fighter. I, he's very good fighter, and this is the. Uh, best step up for me. I I won road to UFC thing, and now he's a UFC fighter. I'm gonna prove that I belongs there. I belong there. I belong in the UFC. I beat this guy, and then you know, step forward. I love it. Well, like you know, what's gonna be going down at UFC 294? is incredible because the card has had so many changes with the the title fight and the co-main event. I feel like the fans feel like this is now an even bigger card. So it's a massive spotlight. Are you kind of happy to be involved in such a massive card? Yeah, actually my my Instagram social media is blowing because I'm I'm fighting in this card UFC 294. The <laughs> see these these who were fighting slam First, Charles Oliveira, now Volkanovski. That's also a hype. And, um, you know, uh, comes Earth. Paulo Costa was there. Now, Usman is Usman is fighting comes Earth. So, these is a huge card. Uh, Abu Dhabi card is always a huge, but I think this is the best Abu Dhabi card ever. And I'm fighting there. I'm, I'm, it's nothing, but I'm very, I feel very blessed that I'm fighting in this card, which is like, it's officially my UFC debut, but I don't think it's my UFC debut. I fought in February in a UFC card. So yes, I'm very excited. And, uh, you know, people people are excited in India. People are excited more more for my fights than Slam and Volkanovski. So that's <laughs> that's what to brag about. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and it's one of your also goals to maybe get the UFC to host and hold an event in India, because that's the one thing they haven't done. That would be a dream come true, I'm sure, for you, correct? Okay, okay. Maybe after uh, maybe after that, I'll be like, okay, if I'll not get the belt, it's okay. <laughs> if, if they, uh, you know, they do the show in India, that's 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 a dream come true and uh, if i can be a part of that it's because it's huge huge uh, uh ufc i i heard this story ufc came 10 12 years ago in india and they they wanted they wanted a indian indian fighter who can fight in the ufc and they were like in india they say that they say that the team say that in india i don't uh, in 30 years there will be no uh, MMA fighters, the culture is not there, and you know uh, when I when I in road to UFC last year, I when I was I was fighting I, I, I was selected for road to UFC. Somebody told me, okay, good, but why why did you take this risk? You know, uh, a, a Indian fighter in the UFC and winning a UFC fight is a ten years dream. Ten years later, it's gonna happen. And that time in my head is like, oh, no, no, no. And in one year, I'm going to do that. And see, we are here just just six more days, seven more days. And I'm going to prove that an Indian fighter can beat a, a UFC American fighter in that octagon. I love it. I'm so excited to be covering your career now that you're in the UFC. I'm so excited to see what you can do both in this division, in the UFC, but also the impact 
that you can have on the sport, specifically in India. And if there's more fighters coming of your ilk, that's only going to help the cause to, for the UFC and force them, hopefully, to hold an, an event uh, in India, which I think would be spectacular because they've held events everywhere. Japan, Korea, Australia. There are a global promotion. Oh, yeah, so yeah, I think Riyadh is also happening. Yep, yep. Riyadh is going to have an event in 2024 as well. Absolutely. Why not India? Yeah, I agree. I agree. So before I let you go, Anshul, just want to get a, a few uh, predictions for some big fights coming up in the next couple of months. Um, the first one is John Jones versus Stipe Miocic. John Jones. John Jones. I don't think I don't think anybody can John beat John Jones other than John Jones. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one, you know, obviously speaking of uh, Riyadh, you know, we have this incredible situation with Francis Ngannou boxing Tyson Fury. What are your thoughts on that fight? And do you think Francis Ngannou has a chance? Ah, uh, it's it's heavyweight. I mean, anybody can have have the chance, but yeah, it's it would be very difficult. Uh, Tyson Fury is, I think, is one of the best heavyweight in the world. Um, like, so I, I don't think uh, Francis and Gano will, 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 will win this fight. But still, it's heavyweight. It's one point thing. You, you can, he, he has the chance. And yeah, I like, I like, I like this fight. I, I'm, I'm just waiting for this fight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy. If I can buy the pay per view, I'll buy the pay per view. But if in India, you don't need to buy the pay per view. Right. We have those. <laughs> Oh, well, listen, Anshul, like I said, it was, a, it was a pleasure to finally speak to you for the very first time. Best of luck uh, this weekend at UFC Night 294 in Abu Dhabi. I'll be watching, I'll be following, and uh, I'm looking forward to just following your career and hopefully have you on so we can speak about the next fight and how things evolve moving forward. So I don't really put it out there like this too much that I support fighters, but I have a, 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 a close following to anyone that's from the UK and from India. So you have my support in any which way I can possibly give it to you. And I hope you uh, get the result that you're looking for on the weekend. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Take care and sure speak to you soon. Thanks for listening to this episode of Smack Talk with Sandu. It really means a lot to me. And hey, listen, if you enjoyed this episode, please go and give it a follow on Spotify and Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your shows.